All right, so I apologize it's taking so long to get started on this episode right here. This is build number two. If you haven't watched the first homemade ice maker build that I've done, you might want to stop right now. I'll put it down in the description and I'll put it at the end of this video. But we have a whole build series of collecting data and turning a small chest freezer into a homemade ice maker. And it's been quite the journey. Uh, the ch channel blew up because of that video and I promised that I would do another build and refine it add some more features since we went through so much testing with the last one and realized that we could go from literally just a couple of pounds a day of ice up to currently 13 pounds. We're just flying up. I mean, we've went up several hundred percent production with just a few minor changes. So the reason this build's been delayed, life's been busy. I've been building our house. That's also on the channel if you'd like to check it out. But this right here, this has been the hardest piece to find of anything that I've got going on. I have made several trips up to a very large city, hit a bunch of box stores, and have not been able to find a chest freezer of this size. Everybody has been sold out. COVID has got things sky high through the roof on prices, as well as availability of things. that are just not available. So I finally found one of these chest freezers just the other day. There was only one in stock at a big box store. This is not the model that I currently have on my first homemade ice maker build. I really want to keep everything consistent. Couldn't even get the same ice makers. Amazon was sold out. So I've got all new variables here. I hate that. Could help us, could hurt us, or could be exactly the same. But today we're gonna do a DIY homemade ice maker friendly build. No cutting, no modifying of this at all like we did on the first one. I've got some ideas to mind to make this a little more automated and uh, hopefully increase production as well. Let's get started. So if you're new to the channel, this is my original DIY ice maker absolutely nothing wrong with it like i said we just want to make a little more refined version and see if we can get production up even more although it's been doing amazingly well so i've got a big single fan mounted in there two uh, freezer refrigerator ice makers and look at there it's about to drop right now thought i heard something running it's been kicking ice out like crazy i actually had to unplug this other day but we just filled up a cooler twice this weekend so i put a big dent in it but it's been really pumping the ice out there goes some right there. But we're about to retire this one. This one's got a new home and a friend. And you can see I had to cut through the side last time to run some tubes in. By the way, this tape's on there just because I caught the joints a while back and never took it off. But I run wiring and water tubes through the side. We're gonna try to avoid all that today with this new type of build. So if you look online, there's something called a keezer or a kegerator. A lot of people are doing that for their beer kegs. And uh, a lot of them will take a chest freezer like this disconnect the lid and lift it up so you can run all your wiring and things like that through it. I think that's an excellent idea and what we're gonna go after today. So let's get started with that. We wanna get the lid off. I wanna build a collar, a lip, a frame right here, raise the lid up, and then that new collar that is uh, not modified the freezer, that's what we'll run everything through. it would be a nice, clean install. And you still have your freezer that you didn't touch. You didn't risk puncturing any coals in the side. This stuff has got pentane in it now. It's highly flammable. There's no way you would want to go through the side of one of these freezers. Now I made for sure some freezers actually have a heater in the lid or a heater in the side. I made for sure this one did not. That would not be good for us moving the lid up. You would see wires coming right here through the hinges. But typically these super cheap freezers like this don't come with any bells and whistles. All right, so instead of measuring the top of the freezer for this lip or collar I'm gonna build, I need to measure, this is the lid flipped upside down, I need to measure the gasket on it because that's what we're trying to seal to. It's far more important than the top big fat lip that's on that freezer itself.
All right, so what I decided to make my collar out of is a one inch thick piece of PVC trim board. So I found this at Lowe's, it's three and a half inches tall. The majority of the stuff you're gonna find is like quarter inch thick, half inch thick, but I knew I wanted one inch thick so I could get a nice lip for that gasket to seal on. The gasket is about three quarters of an inch wide. So one inch gives me a perfect sealing surface and a little bit of room to play with. The other reason I like this, because traditionally most people use a wooden collar on those keysers I was telling you about. Wood can get a bit moldy, a bit mildew. It has basically no R value, which this may not, but I have a feeling this does decent on insulation. Um, but the other thing I don't like about the wood is it's got a rough textured surface. This is perfectly smooth. That's critical for that rubber seal on that lid to seal down to this and not suck any air in. Plus this is rot free, should be mold free, easy to clean. You can bleach it, you can do whatever you want with it. So it seemed like the perfect choice. It's kind of pricey, it was like $30 for this 10 foot piece, but it worked out perfect with very little waste. All I have is a little piece left up there. But that's why I chose it. Good sealing surface, rot free. Now to seal this down to the top of the freezer is critical as well. I just so happen to have some of this laying around. This is a rubber butyl tape. You can also buy it in a tube and run it out of a caulk gun. But this is just a, a paper backing right here. It'll peel off, it's very sticky and uh, should seal perfectly to this. And then when I press this down on the top of the freezer there, it should seal it really well because you do not want to suck any air in. That'll pull condensation in here and make it frost up a lot quicker.
spray adhesive. Okay, so I have a little bit of caulk and paint drying over there. I thought I would play with this uh, smart controller that I purchased here. I reached out to y'all a while back and said, I really need a way to cut the fans off when the heating element kicks on on the bottom side of the ice maker to release the ice. I was so concerned with these high velocity fans and putting so much cold air on the ice maker itself, I was afraid that the ice cubes were never gonna release. Heating element wasn't gonna work as designed and I was gonna wind up break, breaking the arms that come around to release the ice. So I purchased this smart controller. I have just went through and programmed it and set it up. It was not expensive at all, and I think it's gonna do exactly what I need. So let's test this. Okay, so I've got a small fan right here. We're gonna see if it'll turn off and on. And long story short, there's two temperature probes. That's one reason I really wanted this controller because I have two ice makers and there's two controlled outlets that controls for these temperature probes. So you can turn this, uh, you can set this up to turn on at whatever temperature you want it to, whatever the probe's reading, and turn off each outlet based on a set temperature. So I have just randomly picked at 35 degrees I want the fans to cut off because the heating element's gonna get a whole lot hotter than that. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so if you flip the ice maker over on the bottom side, this big loop, this one's actually covered in plastic and that's really good because that'll hold my probe in there. But there's a big metal heating element right here that heats up this ice tray mold. So when these arms come around, it releases ice so they're not frozen to the mold. Um, so I know it's gonna get way hotter than 35 degrees. So I'm gonna stick my temperature probe in there and whenever it reads 35 degrees, I've got it set up to cut the outlets off so to kill the fan, so the fan's not just blasting on the bottom because that's the way I'm gonna set them up with this ice maker and uh, causing this heating element to not work. Then I've got it set up that once it drops that down below 40 degrees, which should not take long at all once you put some water in there, it's closed, the freezer's gonna be running around zero degrees anyways. As soon as it gets back to 40, I've got it to where it'll kick back on. And I can adjust and play with that. I might set it up to 80 degrees or something so the fans are kicking on even quicker. Then the fan will stay running all the way till we get back around to the heating element kicks on again. And again, it's just not interfering. I have big concerns about it uh, not releasing and tearing up my ice makers. So you've got the two temperature readouts for the two probes here the two outlets that are controlled. So I'm gonna plug this little fan in outlet one. I'm gonna take temperature probe here. I have some ice water. That should get me down to just below the 35 degree set point that I have. You can see it's dropping rapidly now. 42 degrees and dropping. 39. All right, looks like we'll get below 35. Let's see if this fan will kick on. There it is. The fan is running, although y'all might not better see or hear that. So let's take the temperature probe out and I've got it set up that uh, once we get up above 35 degrees, it'll cut off, excuse me, 40. Fan just cut off. So it's working absolutely as intended. Awesome. It took me a while to find this. Um, I went through so many different things and was talking with y'all about all these other kind of smart controllers and processors and specialty relays. Thank goodness I found this. I think this is set up for like aquariums um, or reptile you know, aquariums to where you can turn on a heating element, turn on a cooling fan, whatever you need to control a specific temperature in there. So that's really awesome that I found this. I think it was 20 something dollars. Totally worth it for this build.
All right, so what I've decided today, I went and bought two different types of four inch PVC elbows. <clears throat> Cut a short piece of PVC and stuck in this one. This is a longer sweep elbow. As you can see, this one is kind of a, just a hard 90. And I had to do this so they would actually fit down in here. So I'm gonna put both of these together. This is going to give the fan some stability. I'll show all this in just a second. And I got one other special piece. So everybody was kind of concerned about if I pull cold air off the bottom, which is what I'm doing, that uh, I could plug this up with ice. So I got some of these four inch drain plugs that just so happen to fit in here nicely. I can always cut some openings elsewhere down the road, but I think we'll be able to pull enough air in, although I probably will go ahead and drill some relief holes elsewhere to make sure that fan is pulling a good flow of cold air up straight from the bottom. All right, now what I've done is I've taken one of those big cooler guy fans, I'll list all this down in the description, and put one of the baffles on both ends. I'll show you how I just did this. And this will actually fit down in a piece of pipe that I'm about to put up there. And then I've got this forcing cone or diffuser to go right beneath the ice maker and really force that pot, uh, bottom cool, cold air right to the bottom of the ice tray. All right, so now you should be able to see what I've done. I've got the uh, vented end caps right there so they can always pull air in and ice won't pack up inside of there. Got my 90s, double 90s coming up to a tube that I just cut. And then I've got the fans loosely fitting right in the top. Actually, it's a very snug fit. And this is very solid. The reason I did the extra 90s and all like that is so this stuff couldn't tip and fall over here. But it, uh, it feels very solid. So now I have two very high powered fans, very high velocity, spaced about two inches off the bottom of the ice makers right there. And I left the two inch gap so it come up, hit and kind of fan out and make sure I cover the entire ice cube trays. But that is going to be a tremendous amount of air. Now this does cause me to lose some room, but it is what it is. We're just gonna let the bottom fill up and then I can always scoop ice in and around these things right here. Still can get plenty of ice. All right, so this switch right here, I bought one with three hookups instead of two. This is a refrigerator door light switch. And the reason I bought a three-way switch is because I need this to actually turn power on when the switch is closed, whereas most switches will turn power on when the switch is open like this and up. Then it'll turn power on to the light in the refrigerator. So I figured if I get a three-way switch, it should work both directions. And sure enough, it does. Now the way to test that is take a multimeter and put, put it on uh, the continuity testing. So when you touch these two together, you get a tone. So I touched the one over here in the middle and the one on the right that says common. And you push the switch down, they make contact. So that will allow the fan to make contact and run the entire time this is closed. But as soon as I open this up and the switch comes all the way open, it kills power to those two connections. Perfect for what I need.
Well, it's kind of bittersweet. This is probably the last time I'll ever scoop ice out of the original ice maker. So a lot of people have asked me, what am I gonna do with this? Well, ever since I decided I was gonna do a second build, you know, a few months ago, I promised this one to a friend who was dead said he was gonna build one. He didn't necessarily want the build as much as he just wants an ice maker. So this one has already had a home promise to it for quite a while. All right, well, I present to you the DIY homemade ice maker version 2.0 that I've been promising forever. And I hate to admit that it's still not perfectly done. So we will have a follow-up video. So this ice maker has actually been somewhat ready for over a week and a half. We just went on vacation, so that really set me back on the build. Plus I needed one more simple refrigerator door switch right here. I'll show you all that in a second. I ordered that a week and a half ago, right before we went on vacation. And my plans was just as soon as we got back a couple days ago, install that switch, start testing this and get the video out. It said it was delivered. I come home, I tear the whole place apart. The switch is nowhere, nowhere to be found. Finally, I run the tracking number and see that it was delivered into a town 30 miles away from here. So it never made it here. This switch has been a thorn in my side. By the time this is all said and done, it's probably delayed this build two weeks. So Amazon has refunded me the last switch, but that wasn't the problem. I need the switch more than I need the money. They have shipped me another one out and they're telling me it's gonna be another week before I get that switch. So to not delay this project an additional week, we're gonna go ahead and start testing it. I'll get you this video out and then we're gonna do a follow up video because we still have some more tests and things I want to do to this and some last minute changes that I made as well. Shipping is unbelievably slow here over the last many, many months. They blame it on COVID, maybe that's what it is. I just can't get parts overnight or in two days like I used to be able to. So it's really delaying projects like this. But this is set up enough now we can go ahead and start testing production because that's what I'm really curious about. So without further ado, let me show you what I've done here. We'll hook it up. I'll run a couple 24 hour tests, meet y'all back in here. We'll wrap this video up. All right, so where do we begin? Probably the biggest change from this model to that model I just yanked out over there would be this lip, this collar that I built. So I used one inch by, I think it's three and a half inch PVC trim board that I got from Lowe's. It's really nice and solid. It's sanitary. A lot of people build these lips with wood. Um, plus this stuff actually looks like it probably has some R value, some insulation value to it. It's just nice and dense. Plus the other thing is it gives me a nice slick surface up top right here, which should make a very good seal to the lip around the freezer. Now y'all seen me on the inside, I took three quarter inch, cause that's what my local hardware store had, foam insulation. This is uh, comes in four by eight sheets, cut it down, and I have an inch and a half thick of insulation here. You know, I sprayed adhesive on it and stuck them together. I even trimmed out nice little lips with my razor knife. So uh, this indentation of the lid would fit down in here perfectly. So overall, you're looking at two and a half inches here that should provide some decent insulation. Cause you gotta keep in mind now, the coals are somewhere down in here. There is no coals further up here, so we are, we've created a warm spot. But I think we're gonna take care of that with what I did with the fans. So a very popular request was pull cold air from the bottom. I run four inch PVC up to two very high powered cooler guy fans. By the way, all this will be in the description if you're curious about the parts that I use. You know, in the last one, that over there, I used one single of these fans and it made a huge difference because they put out so much velocity. So I'm curious to see how this is gonna do with two. So I'm forcing air on the bottom of these molds with two fans in this one, but that did bring up a concern. I'm gonna have these molds, ice maker molds, so cold now, I was curious if the heating element on the bottom would heat up enough to release the ice cubes and not break these fingers as they come around and try to release stuck ice. So that's where the automation kind of come in. Now this may or may not work, we're gonna test it. This will also be in the description. It's a pi meter. This right here has two independently controlled outlets that has two in independent temperature probes inside. And I've got those, as you've seen, mounted on the bottom of the heating element. You can program when you want this to cut off, when you want it to cut back on. I'm still playing with all those settings. That'll take time. But basically as that heating element heats up, 
the probe temperature goes up, I've got it set to where it'll kill the fans while the heating element's actually working and releasing the ice cubes. And then once that temperature drops back down, once the heating element kicks off, the fans kick themselves back on, it's fully automated, and they go back to blasting cold air on this tray. Again, I did that just because uh, I was concerned about the ice cubes not actually releasing or the heating element being able to override the uh, cold blast of air from the fans. So like I said, it pulls off the bottom. We're not done yet. Next uh, video, unless I get it really in time for this one, we'll see. I have ordered stainless wire mesh. Everybody has asked uh, for me to build a false bottom. I think I'm gonna do that in here. So I'm gonna get some stainless steel mesh that's got holes all in it, notch it out to go around these pipes, build a false floor so those tubes are never buried in ice. They're always pulling the coldest sinking air off the bottom blasting that up to the ice maker trays. And the other thing they're doing, they're recirculating that cold air up here in the top that's kind of a dead space because, well, we don't have any coils up here now by putting this collar in. We're really hoping all that is gonna help out. The other beautiful thing about this design was now everything, tubes and all, which I'm about to caulk in, run through this lip. I can pull this right off. It's just stuck down with that uh, kind of rubber butyl tape. I can pull this right off. The freezer hasn't been modified. Put the hinges back down and it's ready to go, you know, for warranty purposes, or I just need to move all this over to a new freezer down the road. That's 100% possible now. So, I don't want to spill the beans too much, but as y'all noticed, I could put a third ice maker in here. So I really wanted to move the ice makers around from how I had them over in that one right there. I could put a third one, or now I have a lip here. And if y'all noticed in the background, I have been saving specialty plastic trays from our house build. Those all held nails. I'm gonna clean them out. And now I actually have a tray to make block ice. And I'm thinking about doing that. It'll help with thermal mass. Plus I can use some of that block ice in my coolers or fish boxes. So I wanted to leave this open and not cram it with a third ice maker right now, especially till I see the capacity of these two. This is not a big freezer. So these may make enough ice um, and fill this up quick enough that there's just no point in putting a third one in. You really probably need a bigger freezer. So I've got my power supplies on the back, all my tubes ran through, my water valves, everything's ready to go. I just need to drag this over there and hook it up. And don't forget, I'm still waiting on a fan switch. You've got to have one of these switches right here for each fan. So whenever I close this, the fans kick on. Whenever I open this, the fans will kick off. That's not the case right now because I have one of them straight wired. The other one's actually running through the switch. So the concern with the last one was anytime you open this, if the fans are still running, they could actually pull hot air into the freezer. That's not so much the case this time now that I don't have a fan just sitting up top pulling hot room air in here. It's pulling out of the bottom. But just in case, I wanted the fans to die anytime you open this to not blow cold air out or pull hot air in. So now when you close this lid right here, fans kick on. When you open the lid up, the switch uh, engages and it kills the fans. So I really like that design right there as well. So that's it. It's ready to go. It's automated. We've got the door switches in, which was the big request. Um, we are going to do some more modifications to this down the road. I have fans. I'm thinking about blowing heat off the compressor down there. But right now, I kind of want to leave it as is because it's a good comparison to this one and see if we've made any improvements or made it worse. You just don't never know until we hook this up. So I'm about to put a couple bags of ice in here for thermal mass, let this cool down for 24 hours, get the temp, and then I'll start measuring ice production here. I'll put something in to uh, catch this ice, and we'll see what this thing is actually capable of. moment we have all been waiting for the first 24 hour test we just hit 24 hours exactly on the kilowatt meter I'm gonna jot down the kilowatt hour usage so we can get a new calculated cost per pound usage is up but that's explainable two fans extra power supplies running that's a uh, smart power strip so that's to be expected but did we make more ice let's find out right here let me jot this down real quick we'll get to weighing some ice 
All right, one thing to take note, I've got two temperature probes in there, one all the way on the bottom, one about halfway up. We are struggling to get below, anywhere from 11 to 15 degrees. Now I have a theory. One, we have created more volume, more airspace in there, but we did not increase the coils. The coils still stop somewhere down in here on the freezer. And now we have more volume to cool down. So we're probably putting an extra load on the freezer. Two, we've got two high velocity fans here now, recirculating more of this dead space and warmer air. Um, also, we're probably putting more of a load in there with water if we've made more ice. Um, so there's lots of different theories there. However, we are making ice. I just took a peek. The, the trays have ice in them, so it's working. So obviously with that wind chill factor, we're getting the trays down below that 10 degree trigger point that they need for them to activate and start going through their cycles. So that doesn't appear to be a problem at all. My gut feeling says if I were to just leave this freezer running, keep the fans unplugged, our temperature would drop again, probably because of a combination of everything. Maybe the fan motors themselves are putting off heat, the recirculation of this warm air and not allowing it to separate out uh, warm air rise because now we're keeping everything stirred up. But I don't know that it's gonna be a problem. And the way I can see what's gonna happen is down the road, I'll let this fill it with ice, especially now that we're going into winter, but I'm still gonna use a lot of ice. Unplug the fans and the freezer should be far more efficient because then it'll probably get down to zero degrees or wherever it needs to be and cut off and just kind of sit there and come on as needed. So we're not always gonna to have to run the fans. All right, so are you ready for your first peak? Here we are. That's a, that's a decent amount of ice and I don't really see much. I see one piece that fell out. So what I'll do is look under these bags, make sure I catch all the ice and let's see how much this is. I'm really not sure to be perfectly honest with you because this is a new way of catching it and weighing it. It looks like both ice trays are frozen solid and we're probably about to dump. That's why I like to do two 24 hour tests and average them together. The good news is that worked well. I only see one ice cube that fell out. That's shocking. So I've also purchased us a new digital scale for this testing. We were starting to get to where the other one I was outweighing it. This one goes up to 50 pounds. And we're just going to start dumping in a bucket and weighing that way. All right, so I'll go ahead and zero that out. Let's put all the ice in and see what we did. I am really excited about this one. Let's get that right there. pounds 2.1 ounces for this thing gets really specific all right i'm gonna go put this ice in the cooler so we keep thermal mass in there consistent we'll run in one more 24 hour test yes i would like to see a little bit higher number but i think i know why i think we're going to be able to reduce the cost of this take some of this stuff out already but i'm getting ahead of myself let's run one more 24 hour test i think i know how we can get production up even more all right, so here we are for our second 24 hour test and we're going to take an average of the two. That's the way I like to do it because you just never know when you may time right before one was going to dump and it really throws the results off that way. So I found doing at least 48 hours of testing and getting a 24 hour average is the way to go. Now I know this video has gotten really long. If y'all stuck with me to this point, thank y'all so much for watching. A lot of people have commented over the last week or two. Just go ahead and release the build video. Don't worry about the testing. I wanted to include some testing in this video and I know it made the video go really long because I had no idea with this whole new design if I was gonna release a video and then start my testing and realize one or two days into this that hey, things are burning up or breaking or just not gonna work at all. I, I just did not wanna release a video that way. So a couple days of testing was definitely needed. I've still been adjusting my temperature probe some. Um, I've been sitting in the shop a lot, editing videos, listening to how this thing's cycling and working. I've actually had to drop the temperature down on those um, to where it kicks the fan off sooner and uh, really gets the heating element going well before the dump cycle goes. These are timed a little different than my last ice makers that I had. Um, but uh, thus far, everything's working great. I'm not even so sure that we need uh, the smart controller to cut the 
fans themselves off because I've heard them dump a time or two without that working. But now that I've got the temperature adjusted correctly, it's kicking on every time about a minute before it dumps or kicking the fans off about a minute before it dumps every time and it's working perfectly. But I'm not so sure that we actually need the fans to cut off. All right, so to the eye, it looks about the same as yesterday, but hard to say till you weigh it. Okay, everything is zeroed out, ready to go. Let's get to weighing this ice. All right, did drop a piece, but I just picked it back up and put it in there. Why not? See, that's why we run another day of testing. 11 pound, 14 ounces, almost 12 pounds. That's really good. So right at 12 pounds, that's pretty awesome. That's good. This thing seems to be consistently nailing above 10 pounds, which was my ultimate goal. All right, so I got a few numbers to share with you and then we're gonna wrap this video up. Thank y'all so much for the interest in this, all the comments, the likes, the shares, subscribing to the channel. That's what it takes to get channel growth and to allow me to be able to afford to do things like this and make these type of videos. So thank y'all so much. So I know there's several people out there that wanna hear some numbers. I just crunched them. Um, overall cost of the machine, cost per pound, things like that. So I have about $535 in the build this way. Now there's two factors that make this cost quite a bit more than the last ice machine. One, well, we've just got more stuff. We've made a cleaner build, um, DIY friendly, no cutting, no modifying or nothing, no risking puncturing uh, the free lines, anything like that. So there was added cost there. Plus we automated some of this. The other thing is things have went through the roof with due to COVID supposedly. It's been extremely hard to find freezers and parts. And when I can find them, they cost quite a bit more than what they cost just a few months ago. For example, my last freezer, I paid $179 for. Now that same freezer, they haven't had them at Sam's in forever. My buddy just sent me a picture yesterday. They finally got them back in stock, $249. That's a heck of an increase just over a few months. I didn't pay that much for this one, but prices are going up constantly. So your results may vary on how much you have to pay for everything. So I've got 535, that's including the taxes in this. I kind of rounded right there. We got very close to that figure. Um, it did cost more to operate. We're running more fans, we're running a smart controller. So originally it was 45 cents now, 45 cent to make a 20 pound bag of ice. Now that's not factoring in the cost of the equipment. Uh, there is a life on this and you'll have to factor some of that in. It costs me now 64 cents to make that same 20 pound bag. Yes, that's, that's still not much, but that's a heck of an increase cost wise um, versus the old one. We're just running more stuff. We're using more electricity. That's all there is to it. And it looks like we averaged 11 pounds over a 48 hour period here. So that's pretty good. My goal was 10 pounds a day in this very hot shop. It was 97 degrees when I did my test yesterday. It's cooler today. That may be why we got a slight increase in production. Eventually this is going in an air conditioned room where I expect production to really come up and efficiency of the freezer to be better and cost per pound to go down. Now with all that said, I really could care less that it costs 60 cent to make 20 pound bag versus 40 something cent with the last one. It's the convenience factor. I've tried to tell everybody that since day one. I live out in the middle of nowhere. When you ca uh, calculate just the convenience of having ice right here ready to go for my coolers or for my boat when I pack it up to go fishing, it's hard to put a price on that. Now I don't have to burn gas, drive all the way down the road, go to the convenience store, buy junk because I'm there. Let's face it, we tend to do that. And next thing you know, that three or four dollar bag of ice down there wind up costing you a lot more money by the time you factor in all those other variables. So even if this were to cost me $3 for a 20 pound bag of ice, I would still do this build any day of the week for the convenience of it. Some people are gonna argue, hey, as much as you're investing in this now, you could go find a used commercial machine somewhere. You probably could, but then you're running the risk of very expensive parts breaking. Hey, if I have an ice maker that breaks in here, they're 40, 50 bucks to replace it. No big deal. Unplug, plug in, ready to go. I guarantee you parts for a commercial machine are gonna cost far more than that. Probably gonna have to call a tech out to figure out how to replace it. Um, so there's just, again, kind of that convenience here. I've got two ice makers, one breaks. I'm still making ice. I can get another one very easily 
So I, I really enjoy this. Plus it's just the fun of building this. Um, if I needed 40, 50, 60 pounds of ice a day, no, this wouldn't work for me at all. I would need a commercial machine. So they have their place without a doubt. So moving forward, I know a lot of y'all wanted to see the build. You've seen it, you're happy. You're probably done with the channel. Thank y'all for sticking around. I'm still gonna do some testing here. I do not think, my gut tells me, we do not need the PVC, we do not need the fan on the bottom, we do not need the smart controller. Whether you're talking 70 to $80, we can shave off the price of this right there. I'm thinking I'm gonna mount the fans to the lid. My gut tells me, testing with the last one, it looked like once we had the air velocity, that cold blast of air toward the top of the ice makers, not the molds, um, I don't know if it was an evaporation effect or what, but it looks like that was giving us a much higher increase in production on ice. So I'm gonna test that, and I'll release another video for the people that do wanna see that. If you're done with the build, hey, you're done with it now. Um, we made a nice clean build. I'm very proud and happy of it, but I think we can get more production out of this. We've seen that rare 13 pound a day number with the last one, once I had the fan blowing more toward the top of them. So I'm thinking a couple fans mounted up here to the lid, blowing right across the top of these ice makers. Again, no PVC, no nothing. I can have them where they come out of the way. When I open the lid, I get all the storage back in my ice maker or my deep freezer at that point. And again, a big cost savings. You won't need all that automation. Just a couple fan switches in there and you're good to go. So if you're interested in that, I'll be doing testing over the next week or two. I still have a lot to do. I still gotta insulate this back wall, insulate the pipe outside. Some of you are probably wondering why I have not already done that. I don't like doing too many variables, changing too many things, and then if you get unexpected results, you have no idea out of the 10 things that you change, what gave you the result. I like to be methodical, slow, and test things as I go. So I still have insulation. I'm still gonna insulate the heck out of everything, the pipes, you name it. I'm gonna get more production out of this. If you wanna follow along that journey, hey, subscribe to the channel, keep watching. Thank y'all so much. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Sorry it was so long. I can't help it. It's what I do. Catch you on the next video.